thank Mr. Uh, Mr. Charette and uh, Mr. Zorn uh, for uh, uh, sticking sticking with us and, and being uh, allowing us to uh, bring new ideas uh, to the table constantly. Uh, the, the council members uh, were, were uh, aware of this, and uh, uh, legal department uh, and uh, HR, uh, Lori Siskin, were very instrumental in, in helping us put the, together this whole plan. So I, I want to applaud everybody that was involved. Um, what I'd really like to do right now, uh, I, oh, also I'd like to, uh, the Southfield Firefighters Association, Tom Colombo, was on board with this. Uh, they, uh, we, we sat them down and, and uh, right from the very beginning, they understood the reason that we hadn't taken the safer grant initially, mm -hmm. and uh, they were able, they were really on board to help us uh, uh, move this forward. Also, FEMA, uh, uh, our specialists, our uh, uh, program specialists at FEMA, uh, Tony Faison and Tina Godfrey were very instrumental in helping push this through. Uh, they were uh, took our calls, and uh, other than uh, when they had that disaster go through, uh, the weather go through, the storms go through a couple of weeks ago, uh, that shut them down for about a week. They were they were always uh, right there for us. Uh, I'd like to have Ken Wheaton come up here now. I'd like to introduce this uh, young man to you. I don't know if you've, you've met him, any of you have <coughs> met him. Um, Ken has uh, been instrumental in uh, writing grants for us uh, over the past few years. Uh, to date, we have over two and a half million dollars that we've brought in in, in uh, federal funds into the community. Uh, Ken personally has been responsible for uh, 2,335,000 of that. Uh, he also, we also have about 44,000 pending from the uh, AFG grant that you just approved us to write for, uh, where we will get uh, physical fitness and uh, helmets. Uh, but Ken is uh, <coughs> one of those guys that goes over and above. He has uh, done most of this on his own time. Uh, he takes countless hours of his personal time at home. He's, he has new babies that he has to deal with, and he still seems to find the time to do it. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> yeah. uh, but he, he is... Uh, one of the firefighters that will be uh, around this community for a long time. And I, I can honestly say it's individuals like Ken uh, that make me proud to be a Southfield firefighter and be part of this community. Uh, and uh, it's, uh, I just want to uh, thank him personally, and, uh, and uh, he provides a great service to the, to the city. Uh, I, I'm, I'm willing to answer any questions, uh, and, and I'll answer any questions that you may have on how this will all work. Mm -hmm. I just want to know when does this go into effect? Well, after, after uh, if the council approves the uh, amendment tonight, uh, then we will uh, begin the hiring process. Uh, we've already had talks with uh, Lori uh, Siskin and HR, and uh, we will uh, begin the process. And as long as it takes to have the process completed, uh, we'll be able to get them hired. FEMA has changed the the rules a little bit. It used to be you could only apply for uh, reimbursement on a quarterly basis, and we can apply whenever we want to now. So we'll probably apply on a monthly basis unless the administration just, uh, you know, dictates sure. otherwise. That's how the reimbursement will work. Yeah. So there won't be a lot of front loading. <coughs> and we will be able to we go. We're 14 months, just to update you on this, we're 14 months into this process already, which would, you would think we would only have, um, what would it be, eight more? Eight? Ten, 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 ten more months because it's 24 months, uh, but that's not the case. <coughs> they uh, have said in their amendment letter that they will grant us an extension, so we will get the full two years out of this, um, which has been a huge benefit because had we taken it back when we originally had it, it almost almost be out to be uh, financially strapped. So it's a win-win across the board for the community. Thank you. Uh, well, that's what I was going to do, but. Uh, uh, and that's fine. I'll support that. But I do want to say one thing too, um, is that you know this grant has kind of been floating around. You know, we've been talking about it for, for since I, before I was elected to council. But I, I really want to congratulate all of you who work together in the, in, the, in a teamwork way um, to make it so it fit the needs of our community. So that was it was it was something that could fit our financial situation um, and, and the needs that we have here. So I, I just want to congratulate the administration, fire department, the grant writer. Uh, and, and working in collaboration with FEMA to make it happen. So I'll support the rule 10. Okay, we have a motion by Mr. Simon to come by Mr. Moss. Uh, that we have a meeting to act. 
<laughs> ignore them, but I mean, what you have to go through to, to work through this situation, I know it's enormous, but uh, so much credit is due to your perseverance. So on behalf of all of us, thank you again. Well, thank you. We have a motion on the table. All in favor? Aye. Opposed? Motion has carried. Thank you again. Thank, thank you very much. much. And Appreciate congratulations it. for that. Our next item is a uh, request for gaming license. Um, the petitioner has asked that this item be removed from the table at this time. Um, there is not enough time to, um, if council approves this is being used, to get the approval for their offer um, program. So they're going to probably bring it back in November or December. All right. <coughs> that would be, uh, be Shelly and Fred. Fred. Fred.
CBS radio is still going to be paying, paying taxes on their current equipment and until they turn over into the new space. And then in year six, uh, the, schedule, the depreciation schedule, they would be paying 73870 year seven, and year eight. And um, we worked through, we just did the eight years on this one, right? Right. It's just an approximate number, but they're, um, the taxes that they're currently paying will obviously be phased out as they purchase the new equipment and new, move into the new building that they'll be occupying. And again, they're leasing that building from um, Frank Jonah, so they do not own the property. And obviously, Frank Jonah will be paying the real property taxes on that building. Um, and keeping that building occupied. And what's your square footage that they have now? In that building? Yeah. Currently, I would go in. We have 20,000 square feet. So they're going to go from 20,000 to occupying 40,000, doubling their uh, square footage. Um, Maybe this is a good time for Greg Ross to come up and explain um, the implications to the city and their investment and the impact and why they're asking for this money at this time.
Um, again, it helps to diversify our marketplace. Um, we have a wide range of businesses in the community, and having a strong presence in the communication aspect has really helps to keep us a diverse community. And um, you know, and whoever's paying the real taxes, they will be paid. So either Frank Jonah with his improvements or CBS Radio. Um, and then the last slide. Um, I know, Greg. I don't know what your your hiring plans are, but you. Um, they have committed to work with our career center for future hiring. They, they do bring in a lot of, there's, there's regular turnover with their staff and that they will work with the city. And as you expand, I think you yes. mentioned you would plan on hiring some more people. That's a big line. area that I go for, digital media, and all of this is a great deal for And one more thing, uh, one of our sister companies, CBS Television, is also a Southfield resident. Um, at this time, the city is, we are, our department is asking for, um, for us to schedule a public hearing on August 20th. Seven. Oh, the 27th? Yes, the 27th, sorry. There's no, there's no council meeting this one, it's the 27th. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> I'm aware of your uh, current facility at American Drive. Um, I didn't catch whether really, uh, CBS owns that building? No, we leased that building. Okay. We have a lease that goes through. Uh, October 2014, the rough move plan is to move uh, 971 the ticket to sports station. Uh, we hope to have the facility built out uh, at the pad and start broadcasting October the 1st. Uh, by April the 1st, 2013, we hope to flip buildings, move from the current location. What we have WWJ, we got uh, L radio, which is kind of contemporary radio. And we got top 1270. So we'll flip those those from the flip those people from the current location next door. And then by January 1, 2014, we hope to have uh, relocate the people that are there uh, to the facility. And then we have about a year and a half or so of what we call uh, lower level investment for the tweaking the facilities. You know. So you're <coughs> you're. Keeping the current space, you're just moving people. No, we're giving up the current space. We're oh, going to flip over. We're going to. Uh, we have three stations at the current location. We're going to yeah. move those three stations over, and so next April we have four stations in the new building. Okay. And by the end of the year, we hope we have six stations. All six stations. All right. there. And then you're giving up the, the current space. That's correct. I will at least they'll terminate at the um, point we take the new space. I guess this next question is for either um, Ms. Freeman or Mr. Thorne. Uh, is the, the current landlord of the building that CBS is in, uh, have they applied for a tax abatement or rather a um, uh, tax uh, appeal? appeal. They, there has been one and we're trying to work that all out. Hopefully we'll have it resolved by the 27th of August. <laughs> I'm not sure what that means. Well, it's it's under it's, it's under appeal. It is under appeal. The building's under appeal. The current building. Yes. Not by the tenant. Not by, by the tenant. Yeah, I understand. <coughs> this speaks somewhat to the heart of the issue. You're going to go from having 20,000 square feet occupied to a net of 40. At the end of the day, this whole tax appeal issue is about market absorption, having space occupied. Uh, there's no taxable value in empty space. So at the end of the day, we get a net of 20,000 square feet leased. And well, I, <coughs> I guess I, I, I understand all that, and I appreciate that. Um, but I think it's a question that we need to ask every time one of these comes along. I understand. Uh, because if, if you're, if to me it's double dipping. So in this case, it's not. Uh, CBS is not, does not own the building, but it's, um, 
I'm just very leery of tax abatements on buildings that are uh, under tax appeal. And we will use this as leverage with this current owner to get him to get to a settlement as quickly as possible. Okay. And in certain cases, we've even asked that the outright consider dropping the tax appeal. Well, I hope that um, you'll have more information that you'll share with the whole council on this. To me, that's uh, a deciding factor. Thank you. Well, everything you've said looks good, very nice. You're a trillion dollar company, probably. You have more money than we all the city will ever have. And you said our $73,000 property tax rate that you will get makes it possible for you to, to process the whole business in Southfield and all that. You must have a $30 billion budget. You have more money than, than I can count. Or I can count up to two. Okay. Uh, why I'm going to ask a stupid question. You have a lot of money. You're making money and you'll keep making money. Our people are losing their homes. Not enough taxes are coming into us. And here for five years, they're going to take property taxes away from the city. And we can't afford that. So everything you're doing is fine. It's good. Publicity is good. We bring in some business. But all the people who have the homes who went into foreclosure can't afford to pay taxes. And we're giving you taxes legally. We don't give it to the homes. We don't give it to the small business. Uh, I'll, I'll never understand why why big corporations come to us for tax payments. Well, for the self-serving reasons. How much is this going to really help you? Not going to help you. Not going to help our people. It, it, it does make a difference when I did the financial analysis of it. But I, I don't want to uh, argue your points. No, those are all good points. No, don't, uh, don't argue with me. Uh, so, uh, you're going to win it. The council is going to vote the tax evasion to you, but I'm not. And then now, you're really going to have a bonanza. Our state government can probably eliminate uh, property taxes. So you'll have property taxes that you're not paying now, and after five years, you'll never pay property taxes. Because the, the big boys in Lansing will eliminate the property taxes. Boy, you're going to be well <coughs> But our people won't. They'll be worse. Anyway, I don't believe in giving out tax payments, and I'm not going to vote for it tonight. And uh, I wish you well, and you will do well. But I think of the people who have their homes foreclosed and prisons foreclosed and everything. I have an idea. You're not going to pay property taxes for five years, but we're going to give you police service, fire service, EMS. Free. I'll tell you what we need. We're down 100 and, so 200 people or whatever number. Why don't you send us some interns, some volunteers to help us with all For nothing. Free. To come in and help us. Volunteers to work for us. I can't make that promise, but I would definitely look at that. Send us about a dozen people to help us. Yeah. Uh, let's, let's, let's ask for some pre some radio <laughs> advertising <laughs> promotion. What have they been doing? 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 What have they been doing
Yes, and there's several different factors uh, okay. that uh, drive that. Uh, one is the uh, uh, who's in charge. Mm -hmm. As you have two or three or four vice presidents, it's much harder to get them to agree. The structure of the company has changed. We have one chief executive of Detroit now, so that's a big part of it. Secondly, uh, we had a situation where a facility came available, already built, can be converted in months, uh, and leases were starting to expire at the same time. Yeah. So you don't have double rent and penalties by getting out of the facility. And then finally, the person that owns the new facility owns the old facility, and that person will be in the lease early to get into the new facility. Yeah, I was just because I was listening to the dates and just listening to uh, that the lease is expiring at, at a certain time, and, and this kind of just met at a place where you wanted to consolidate and invest in South Hill. Okay. Yeah. And it's, it's the biggest thing is the fact that my lease penalties, double rent penalties, go that way down because at the time the lease is expired and the ownership of the facility. Okay. Now you got me confused, um, Shelly and Fred. <coughs> I asked, is the current location under tax appeal? Just how one big building. I don't know about my current location. Is this but I don't own that building. Is, I mean, I've been over there, but I don't remember where. Well, it's kind of connected. The property is one large. So it's all Jonas property? Yes. yes. Okay. And everything he has is under appeal. Okay. And based on those comparable values, I'm willing to bet if we went to Pineapple Hills, everything he has there is under appeal. And this is what's happening. If you own something in Dearborn, you, you talk to every, every city, and they're all facing the same number of appeals. I'm just not really comfortable with that. You know, uh, uh, they can't have it both ways. They want the tenants. I don't think that they should be appealing their taxes. I mean, these are tough times, uh, and on this point I agree with Mr. Lance. Uh, these are tough times for us, and um, I support, generally support tax abatements if they bring jobs, they fill office space, all those reasons. But uh, I'm really uncomfortable when on one, on one hand they're asking, somebody's asking for an appeal, and on the other hand they're asking for a, a tax rebate. So this is too dirty. Yeah, I understand, but it, it's it's all the same building, um, and they're all in, in it together. I mean, the, the owner of this building is making money from the tenant. But th this uh, payment will help make this, this is what drove this project to come to fruition, to come to this location. We, we will review these issues. We'll review them with uh, it's just, you know, it's just, with our it's outside just, uh, uh, legal counsel, and, and we'll, we'll take a look at it. See what we can do uh, to make it, you know, to, to ask these questions. And well, the table. I get a little disgusted with all of this. Everybody working an angle to make a buck, um, uh, and where's the greater good? Um, here's the issue with the yes. No, 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 yeah, I, I have a, uh, just a couple of questions. Oh, yeah, go ahead. No, you go ahead. Um, let's let's say that we vote no. What's your decision then? Uh, if you vote no, I have to go find something up to help me out. I'm spending money right now. I've signed a lease. So I am spending money. It was one of the elements in the financial model uh, that we relied on to get the financials to look the way uh, we want them to look. But you know, I'm going to be honest, and I, I, I got a 10-year firm contract once the uh, we finish the phase in. You know, I got uh, two five-year options after that. I have an option to take over more space in that building if it becomes a filament in, in the future. And I'm not putting millions of dollars in the court here. I understand yeah. that. Uh, but um, and when you made your presentation, you said that your 
Superior said that you could move, you can consolidate in this building if you could do it without increasing the cost of doing it. Yes. They want to keep keep my cost. Okay. So, uh, uh, and that's the money that we're going to put. But, it, but, but in order to keep the, the cost lower or the same, it requires getting a tax abatement. Or go up back in that cost someplace else. Yes. So, uh -huh. so my, the, the question I was going to ask is, if we say no, then it's likely that your answer is going to be, I'm trying to break the lease and I'm going to have to move someplace else because... Well, then that do that. Uh, I would say, well, I would say uh, try to find an efficiency. You may take out people, uh, something like that. So, so you turn on the radio and nobody's there? No, uh, <laughs> I, I'm not going to take out too many people. <laughs> no, <laughs> no. Yeah. Yeah, right. so, I understand what, what you're saying exactly. Uh, CBS Radio is committed to this project now. Okay, it's, right. been, it's been approved by the board of directors of CBS Corporation. You know. Okay. And uh, I'm at the point right now where if I have an issue, uh, just like with any project I work on. If I have an unexpected cost, they have to go pick out a way to solve that problem. Okay. Right. Um, and you'll, you know, this 73000 is just from the city of Southfield. It, acts, it enables them to access all the other taxes that, that we would be abating. So it's not just $73,000. That, that wouldn't drive this project. It's all the other taxes that, that we would be abating on their tax. This is much greater implication <laughs> Okay, thank you. Yes. Um, I think we have a uh, problem in that, you know, it's not their problem, CBS or Craig. You know, in 1971, we built 8 million square feet of office space. There's 22 million square feet in Central Business District in Detroit. And, and we have been building ever since. And we really have been kind of on a slippery slope as we continue to build space. All of a sudden, we have buildings coming in that appeals at ridiculous below prices because there's vacancies. And once you get vacancies in these office buildings, you can't be your debt service if you own them. So you have you get a walk from them the same way as people walk from their homes and say, you oh, know, send it to the auction. And so as a, a city, we have to really uh, start looking deeply into how much space we have, how much vacant we have, how can we assist the people, you know, as we try to assist people in foreclosure, we should try to figure out how we're going to help people from hanging on to their office buildings. <coughs> because, I mean, they're in dear trouble <coughs> as well. So, you see we're Panasonic, you know, get to deal with Farmington Hills, you know, and here we have a businessman who has now a vacant building he's has to deal with. And, and so, you know, it's not that easy. He has to find a tenant, you know, and he's got to find a per square foot that the tenant's going to sign his contract. And, and then he's got to do some build out in those cases, and that's ten dollars a square or more uh, to do build out for that new customer. I mean, this goes on and on and on in this office marketplace, and 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 I, and I think that we have to, as council people, we have to understand that that we have a flood of this going on, and the only way that we're going to combat is by, it, it, as far as, and I'll speak for myself, <coughs> is open the doors and say, hey, we're open for a business. Come on in and, and see if we can help you and help these owners of these buildings lease space and get these things filled. And eventually what will happen is, is that then your taxes will go up, revenue will go up, and we'll try to get out of this mess we're in. But... I believe that we have to do everything possible to help business people cut a deal and owners of buildings 
cut whatever deal they can or appeal or whatever. Now, I'm not one to pry when when uh, our legal counsel comes and says, you know, we've got 150 more appeals. You know, I get sick over it, you know. But, but when you look at the total picture here, with almost 30 million square feet of office space, you know, uh, we've got to do everything we can to hang on to the ship. And that's the way I look at it as a person sitting here in the council. And and I don't know how long it's going to take before we get out of this mess, but everything that we can do to help you know, people move in and the people who own the buildings, you know, lease up space, and they're making a big investment too by build-outs in some cases that they have to provide, you know. So they come down in their square foot, they come down in, they build out, they, they basically kiss these people as they try to bring them into their buildings, and and uh, we have to understand it's a tough market. So bottom line is that that I'm for this uh, because that's that's the competition we have today, and that's the economic environment we're in today. If everything was different, it'd be singing along like we did, you know, 10, 15, 20 years ago. But that's not the case. Uh, and so, you know, and I and I believe what Mr. Lance said. You know, you can look at individual companies and look at their bottom line, and they're all in the black and making big money and adding whatever. But that's not, you know, saying they're going to make their stockholders happy. Maybe enough money. Whatever their reasoning is, they have to go in and cut their best deal, just like any businessman would. And and. Um, you know, we have to understand it. If we don't want to be in that game, that's, then we have to say, we're going to take the consequences. And we can say, you know, let's, let's not give any abatement, you know, uh, and, and let all our office space dry up and the buildings go to auction. I mean, we still have this beautiful building down here on the corner, bank owned. I mean, every time I see that sign, I get sick. Those are... It was an award-winning design buildings that were built, and and they're empty, and all the asbestos has been taken out of them, and and still there's no takers. Uh, so, bottom line is, whatever we can do to help a new person come into the city, expand in the city, what we can do to retain the business that we have, we ought to do, and. Uh, and it's a it's a fight. It's going to be a fight and a war. And uh, I, d I really don't have an answer, but I know I'm not going to refuse anybody from taking up space in this city, uh, especially the office space. That is our big revenue source. That is our big baby. Our big shopping centers. It once was at Northland, but it isn't anymore. That was our office, and we've got to protect it. So I raised my hand. Um, Don, I totally agree with everything you said, and I understand it. <coughs> but what about the other, the, the part that I didn't hear you speak of is w after they get their appeals and they've driven down um, the taxes they pay, <coughs> um, then they get tenants. But the taxes don't go up. A lot of these guys, uh, I mean, I know companies that are, are building uh, one across the street that drove tenants out so they could get a, 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 a tax appeal. Um, then they, they brought new tenants in, but they had lower taxes. So um, when did it go back up? But the the whole uh, competition is at so many different levels. <coughs> if you have an empty building today and you can negotiate with somebody that's in Joe Blow's office building to come over here and I can give you less square foot and, 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 uh, and I'll do a build out for you and I'll even open up a small little cafeteria for you and uh, all these amenities which they do to they, they get these tenants. 
they, they will do that. And, 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 and the guy that they moved out of, you know, he's going to be fighting that same way. And, and so th there's, there's no answer really to it because, you know, each guy is trying to stop drowning and, and the debt that they have. So they, their, their choice is, is to fight to give tax, a big, well, ta a few other taxes that they if, if they raise the debt too well. Secondly, is to go and get, try to get the buildings occupied. And if they find a good tenant, that they get the most out of it per square foot. And then, and then try to, to put maybe do some build outs for them, whatever, and, and pay their debt. And the consequence is that they can't make that debt. Then it's like, it's like uh, a big giant building up here. You know, the thing was paying $178,000 in taxes. I think it was value was almost over $10 million. It went to auction and sold for $1.7 million. Seven. So, so look what it costs the city. And, and when you say, well, it would be better off if that guy was empty and somebody came along and said, hey, you know, they'll move in and take 60% of the building or 70. It depends on the debt that's on the building, whether they need 70 or 80 to stay alive. But when you sit back and say, no, I'm not going to give tax abatement to go to the auction, over well, here you lost $178,000 worth of taxes that was coming in. That's gone. So so it, it's a tough call. It's a tough call. But it, the, the point is, the taxes don't seem to go back up. And that that's where we are. You, you know, I'm with you. And, and you know, most of the time I supported these requests. Uh, I understand it. But as um, we, we get uh, more and more press on money, you look for, and, and these guys keep working, and, and they're, you know, actually, uh, I think in the big scheme of things, um, how far do you push, uh, uh, whether it's Southfield City Government or any other local municipality, before they can't deliver the services that help them get the tenants in? Well, let me tell you, I've got a stack of, of revenue books that high that, that talk about and studies that have been done that cities had the rights to levy different kinds of taxes. Each time they did, it was taken away from them. Mm -hmm. And and so so this now is coming down to it's not just the businessman that's doing it's these guys up there in Lansing and the federal government. They used to get federal revenue sharing. They used to get you know statutory constitutional. Uh, revenues coming in. You should get all this stuff. Propose the late get up. I mean, all these things, but you can't blame, you know, a guy that's got a building sitting here and he's got a debt to pay. And and and, uh, and if he can go out and rob some place to bring him in to pay his debt, he's going to do it. And if not, the consequences <coughs> are what I just said. The building sits empty, and not only do you lose the appeal, you lose the whole value. It's no different than the residential housing. These houses, look at them today. I mean, on Murray Crescent, the guy was telling me today, Murray Crescent, nice brick ranch on acre ground, you know, $79,000. That is a $200,000 house. Right? And, you know, and, and, and so I look at that and I'm saying, well, what could we have done to keep that house at $200,000? So that we either got the revenue on two hundred thousand, or if he sold it for seventy nine, they're going to drop the value of that house down, and then we're going to lose more revenue. So, so both the housing and, and our businesses are, are all all you know getting into our pocketbook, and and nobody's there to help us. They they just keep saying, well, you guys can afford it. If not, we're going to get the emergency manager in there. And, and, and that's the real story. And it's frustrating. And, and the more you read, the more you hear, and the more you see, and you see the attitudes up there in Lansing, you know, and these guys are walking from the moon or somewhere. I mean, they don't get it. And, and I've got some letters I want to send to this governor and this lieutenant governor and, 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 and let them know all these various taxes that cities, through the history of cities, were able to levy 
to pay services. And it's all gone. It's all gone. Thank you. I've been always limited. I'm sure. Well, I don't want any more dialogue. Yeah. I mean, Your point's well taken. Go ahead, Mr. I think I have a point. Everything you say is present. Let's talk about the past for the things we're good. All these developers and management companies pulled in the money, trillions of dollars. If their tenant came to them and they weren't doing so well and they wanted a, a rent break, the landlord threw them out. So that, to me, is poor management, poor vision and everything. And now they're crying. No, I wouldn't give them the right time because I know at least a dozen businesses that ask for a break in rent. And the landlord threw them out and as uh, Ken said, an empty building, they can get taxes. They make money from empty buildings. But we, we don't, you see. They know what they're doing. They're smart as smart as and clever as they come. I'm not, I wouldn't defend them. I can't defend them. And I can't give them the tax abatement because they brought it upon themselves. And nobody seems to understand that. Nobody. When the Plant Moran men were here, the people were here years ago, they admitted that tax abatements do not benefit the people. And everybody laughed at them. I think that guy was fired for saying that. <coughs> I'll stick to my philosophy, and I know what these landlords do. They do it in the complexes, too. A person can't afford to pay them from a yearly to sign a yearly lease, they're put on month to month, and they add the rent on month to month, and you should see these poor people can't even pay the monthly rent now. It's happening in all the complexes, it's happening in all, all the office buildings. The landlord created our problem, and the banks helped them. Well, you know, just to answer this, nobody, nobody begged counsel or, or, or no, beat up a councilman to approve an office building. All right? If you had to stop building them. I didn't say stop building no, them. Be, be fair. Be fair. If you stop building them, you would, you would have less space and you wouldn't be in this. We shouldn't give them the money. Should no one make a building in the house. Anyway, no. Should have been a bedroom community, and then we could sit back like coming from Wisdom Pleasant Ridge, and it just nothing. It's their fault that they stopped building. That's a, that's really the answer. Anybody else? Yeah, I just can someone give me a sense of a timeline of when the next communication with the property owner is going to be? Are they if we if if it's presented to them that this could be an an acceptable abatement offer provided that we're giving them the tenant that they that they drop or negotiate their appeal or are we supposed to just have a good faith effort to approve of the abatement and hope that they drop the appeal what's give me the timeline that we're talking to the property owner you can't do it you can't get you an answer the chair. Uh, we will initiate a contact tomorrow and uh, get a dialogue because beyond the dialogue that's occurred today. If we can get some sort of indication by August 27th, I think we'd be having a different conversation. Um, so we will, I, we will I think that needs to be priority. Improvement over the current situation. Yeah. Jeremy, we will, we will I'm we'll have a report but we'll show the after. current situation. Okay. I'd like to move a rule oh, for the appointment hearing. I'm totally in support of this because, for one reason, I think we can't keep chase letting people leave the city. It's a very competitive situation. I know that you could go somewhere else. I think it's good for our community to have your radio station <coughs> come in, to have this type of business here. I do think it brings something to our city. Uh, it makes a statement about the city. So I am in favor of this. It might not be in all circumstances, but in this one, I am. I don't like the fact that we have empty buildings over there. I think the tax appeal from the owner is totally a separate thing, and I hope that you know if we can use this 
this is leverage, that's fine, but you're not responsible for that. And I, I understand what you're asking for, and I am in support of it because I think it's good for our community. Not good to have that building empty. Uh, you could go other places. That's why we have this competitive situation. I'm in support of that, and I just want you to know that. Uh, and Mr. Seibert, if you want to make a motion? Yeah, I'll make a rule 10. Motion by Mr. Seibert, supported by Mr. Picasso. We invoke a rule 10. We need to act. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Then I would move the um, uh, request uh, for public the setting the public hearing uh, for the request of CBS Radio for a personal property tax exemption under PA 328 for August 27th. I have a motion by Mr. Seibert, one of the members of the party, that we
Good evening to the Council. As you may recall, we last had a study session on June 11, 2012 to discuss the proposed amendment to the uh, Bassett Building Company Consent Judgment. Based on our notes, there were three outstanding items that we're bringing back for your consideration prior to the uh, July 30th public hearing. One was the elevations to be more realistic and streamlined, and um, I'll give the uh, representatives an opportunity to go through the changes to the building elevation, but as you can see, they're more representational to what's in there as with regards to what's proposed. The other two items that um, I heard the council not have complete consensus on was um, having a sunset clause uh, to the uh, amount of time that the current retailers could exist in there. And working with um, the legal department, as a starting point, we came up with a five-year sunset clause. So the existing retailers could operate up to five years, and then they would have to terminate their leases. And then the third item, if the council approved the uh, establishment to allow the retail uses to be in there, was to pay a proportionate share of the taxes that would be lost. And we calculated that roughly at $2,700, based on about a 29% occupancy. And that uh, we proposed that if the five-year clause was um, approved by the council, that would go up on a yearly basis based on the consumer price index, the urban. Uh, urban formula, as Mr. Shrek has suggested. So the three items, again, just in summary, was um, clean up the building elevations, two, talk about some provision of the sunset clause for the retail operation, and three, uh, to have a proportionate share of the city taxes paid on a yearly basis. And with that, I'm going to turn it over to Mr. Neil Single, who's a representative of um, the proposed shul. And then I'll be happy after his presentation to answer any questions that the council may have. We also have uh, samples of the building material as well. Um, quick um, refacing of the building. 
I think this is a great start. I think this, I think this for the city would be a great. I, I think it's a beautiful looking building, as it is right now with you know with the renovations. Um, and um, you know what, what we what we'd like to do is use these as as guidelines that the council give us guidelines that we need to continue to make the structure looking nice like it is currently right now. Um, so that's you know so that in regards in regards to that third uh, you know to the third point. I know that in the third point I was reading through it very briefly. Um, it's, uh, you know, it was, it was, it was getting kind of specific as to the types of materials and things, of that, things along that, that nature. Um, you know, like I said, we're a month into this job, really seriously, since we got the approval last last month, and we, you know, we, we worked a lot of hours in trying to get this rendition and trying to, you know, and trying to come to an agreement. I don't know if any of you have ever, uh, you know, stuck an addition onto your homes or, uh, you know, has done some renovations, but. When you start getting serious about doing a renovation, anybody here doing a renovation right now? Okay, so Mr. Cyber probably knows that there's a lot of revisions that you do from your first, from your initial, what you think you want, to that final, which happens a few months after the fact. Um, and we only want to make this property better. We, all want, we only want to make it nicer, more appealing to the city, more appealing to us and to the community. Um, so what we'd like to have is pretty much is to get approval from the city as to the guidelines as to what we have presented here today. And then, uh, if necessary, go back and work together with the Planning Commission if you want to improve on you know, some of the materials and improve on the, uh, on the facade and a look on the outside, because there are some different ideas floating around. Um, that's in regard to the, um, to, to the last point. Um, and then, you know, maybe just to present and talk to you a little bit about the first point about the sunset provision. Um, I would I, I would say that you know we were, we talked about this a, a little bit last time in terms of um, our ability to take on the building right now, and the reason why we wanted to keep the retail space was because we were taking in you know some nice income um, from the additional retail spaces to pay off. Um, you know, if we do take financing on this property to pay the mortgage, to, you know, to offset operating co costs. And, um, you know, this, this is a bold move by us. We're a growing synagogue. It's a very bold move. Um, we're putting ourselves in, you know, a little bit uncomfortable situation, but for growth, we're willing to take upon that. However, it, it's very difficult um, for me to foresee what's really going to happen five years from now extremely difficult and I would say it's you know it's probably no different than I guess anybody in this room or even you know more especially the City Council if you would sort of wind the clocks back five years in 2007 and you had a five-year plan of what the city of Southfield were to look like five years from 2007 things were very robust the real estate market was rocking and rolling you know revenues were coming in property values were going out, businesses were coming, and foreclosures were at all-time lows. And things were just hunky-dory, and things were great for the city. Um, and, you know, I, I, I'm sure there were concerns about cutting costs and things like that, but to foresee what would happen over the course of the next five years, and worrying about uh, cutting, you know, basically property values being slashed in half in some areas, and foreclosures, you know, 1,400 foreclosures, more than the city could have imagined, and everything along those lines, the city would never have imagined that we were in the current situation. And I think each of you can really take the heart and understand. And you've been, most of the people sitting at this table have been through this and have <coughs> seen what has happened to the city and see the cuts that really the city has had to go through. And I think you could feel for that. And although we really want in five years from now, we would really like to uh, expire these contracts of the, of, the, of the tenants and take over the entire building. It's very difficult, it's extremely difficult for us to you know, put that down and commitment on people and say that we're going to have a five-year sunset, we're going to get kicked out, after, we're going to have to kick you out after five years. Plus, in addition, you know, if we do take on, you know, if, if we do take on an element of financing for the bank, that is really contingent upon, um, upon revenues that are coming in. And the revenues that we're pulling in, you know, figure 
the tenants are we're collecting between the sixty and seventy thousand, maybe a tad more in terms of rent, um, you know, from those tenants. That's gonna that's really giving us a, a backbone of income that's coming into the synagogue and uh, you know, getting approved for a loan or something uh, contingent upon to having that income, and all of a sudden we strip that income away from us. Um, uh, you know, I'm not quite sure the ramifications of what the bank's going to do in terms of coming back at us. And you know, quite frankly, I, I, you know, I I don't want to put the synagogue and the community at risk because of that. So, I, you know, I, I'd like to sort of discuss that five-year, uh, you know, those two elements. The you know, number one in terms of the rendering and guidance from the council, and number two is that, you know, you know, to have that discussion on this five-year sunset provision that was sort of proposed inside there, and to plead our case for that. Yeah. Um, <coughs> from what I know of what's happening, I think I know, uh, I, I believe that there shouldn't be any option of five years or anything. Because I believe those two retailers, two, two, right? There's at least two that are uh, on school. the verge of going out anyway. They're on the verge of going out and not doing the business. They can't afford to stay there. So we're creating a, a sunset of five years. That's going to be a big mistake. I think we should have an open option and let them stay for a while. And they themselves, I, I personally give them less than two years and out they'll go. And I think I'm right according to the amount of business in that area and the economy today. So I believe there should be an open option to see if there has to be a change. You can always come to the council and, and, do, and ask or whatever you want to do. But there should not be a sunset uh, plan for you. Let those businesses stay there. And if they stay two years, pay your rent, all right. If they stay longer and they're successful, maybe that's all right, too. But if they don't, they won't be able to afford their rent, and they won't pay you anything. So I think you have to have the option of uh, legally owning the thing without hindrance from anybody. You understand what I'm saying? Yeah. I, I think Council can think about that. Um, <coughs> I know that some um, members of the Council would prefer a sunset. At some period, the building goes <coughs> all synagogue or goes all back to retail. And um, personally, I, um, I believe that you're going to be successful. Um, I, I recently uh, uh, had the opportunity to attend uh, a neighborhood picnic at the Channel School, and I was, um, I've been to a lot of neighborhood picnics in South Hill. There had to be a um, hundred kids there. The parents, I mean, it was just, uh, this is the Sherwood Village, which is your neighbor. Right? There had to be over 100 kids there. Um, uh, it was just uh, just astounding. Uh, and and all, obviously with young kids, there were young parents. Um, uh, I've driven the streets in, in that area. I've walked the streets. There, there just are a lot of young families. I believe that you'll be successful uh, and will need, it will grow and need the space. Um, so I, uh, I'm not concerned about the sunset clause, but <coughs> if, there, if there had to be one, 
Uh, do you have another number besides five? I mean, I, I hear your concern. Um, things are um, up in the air right now with housing and finances and property and loans and, and all of that. So, uh, and, and you are going out on, I mean, this is a, a tremendous growth for your center. Um, to go from a basement to a building. Um, and it's a leap. Uh, so, you know, so I'm, I'm empathetic to um, what you're trying to do. So, uh, Mr. Single, if there, if five years you, you're uncomfortable with, um, do you have a counter proposal? Um, would it be ten years? Uh, seven years? I mean, um, if, if you know, if, if that would help move this discussion along. I mean, I, I, I really truly believe that in five years, I mean, my heart tells me that we are going to be there. Um, I guess, I guess, to put my money where my mouth is, we pretty much don't want to take on more than a five-year you know, signing on these individuals with more than a five-year lease. Uh, they've offered, you know, they wanted to have uh, an additional five years on the back end as an option, um, but it was something that they really didn't want to offer to because we really believe that in five years we are going to be at that place. Um, you know, that being said, is this is a um, uh, willing, you know, willing to, I guess if you want me to cut, you know, to, to counter offer on this deal, um, sort of, I mean, I sort of look at this as like a market cycle, you know, with a lot of things, you know, I think maybe the first number that we brought up, that 10-year number, is usually a market cycle where you're going to a dip, um, I'm in the finance world a bit, so that's what I think about, but you go into a bit of a dip and you sort of need some time to, you know, to kick yourself out of it, you know, to do back. Um, I think that ten, I think that ten year number, you know, again, you know, if, if we're in a position at five years to not renew any type of lease and to take over the entire building, we are going to do it. Uh, because that's our goal, we want to do that. But if you wanted to put a number, I think, I think that ten year number would be acceptable. Um, I think that would give us enough time, number one, to you know, to pretty much shore up whatever we needed, and uh, and and I think that would be acceptable from us, you know, to move that from from, from a five-year sunset to a ten-year sunset, and then we would have a you know a definitive answer at that point. You know, I know that says in here would be for all for religious uses only, but at that point in time, we have to have single use. We'd say either it's you know, full retail or full synagogue, but. None of this half half or quarter quarter whatever it might be. Um, yes, I think that I, I think that ten year number would be in agreement with us. And on your uh, point about the building appearance uh, evolving, uh, I think our um, process with um, planning commission, site plan, uh, council site plan committee. Um, Affords you time to correct. Well, through the chair, um, we would like to at least have the concept as part of the exhibit. Agreed. And then we would ask for administrative review on um, if there's minor changes. If there's major changes, we would come come back to the council. Okay. That would at least streamline the process. So you know, I think I think we're um, at least I'm a. Uh, I'll speak for I'm very comfortable with, with this. I understand that what you're showing us tonight uh, is, <coughs> is um, graphically, markedly improved from what we saw <laughs> last month. So uh, I congratulate you on that, and I can see the evolution. <laughs> um, so I, you know, uh, I, I would support your. Uh, uh, request. Can I just mention one thing? I just asked the city attorney if, after five years, there was a request to extend it, that could be considered. Sure. If at that point in time, if more time was needed, that that could be amended. So that might be something we want to look at also. I'm just going out and take a look at that. Okay, who is next? Mr. Zuma? 
Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah it, it, I'm, I, I want to echo what Mr. Cyber said about being comfortable with the ten years, but even maybe if we don't have it necessarily so stringent that you know it's five years or bust. Maybe we have them come back in five years. So the goal. So, so it's not necessarily you know they don't have to come back for an extension, but we come back and we assess the property and assess the consent judgment in five years. Not necessarily with the language there's a sunset, but the language they have to come back and we uh, and we as a body review the retail space. Yeah. So not necessarily have the strictest of strict languages, but if if I'm okay with the tenure, um, but I'd be, I would I would if, if if we're moving toward five, I'd rather see something a little bit more flexible rather than the strict language of it's gone. Um, and uh, and would that make sense to you? You know, if it was a little less, you're going after five. I mean, I, I guess 100%. I mean, I, you know, when you think about five years, five five years is an extremely quick period of time. Um, if I could deal with it faster, the time goes by. But um, you know, five years. I remember sitting with the president here, and we were talking about uh, talking about expanding, and you know. And Thing that we need to, and we have growth, and, and uh, you know, here we are five years later, finally getting around to doing something. So, although I, I do think five is a good number, I think, I think you know, for us, insurance to give us sort of that peace of mind, again, we, we, we really would like, you know, what, and yeah, here's, here's another thing if we do take another five years, and if we do take it up to that 10 year mark, again, with the tax increase, that's at least another 15,000. In revenue for you know for the for the city the city you know everyone's trying to get rid of their taxes this is additional tax revenue that's coming into the city that they're going to take about for themselves over the course of the next uh, of the next five years so it could be five years and five years so I, you know I I would I would really prefer to stick with the ten year option and basically at the ten year we, we could be a little strict after the ten year let's be strict at ten years say in ten years. Uh, you know that's sort of our that's sort of our window of opportunity. It's you know we, you know we got to make it over the course of ten years, and we got to come up with it. We have to you know plan for ten years from now to take over the entire building. But with you know, and I hope you know it could be in three years. You know, yeah. We have massive growth, and I have to negotiate with the VC <laughs> saying we're busting out of the seams, and I want to get out. Believe me, it's in our best interest that we want to take this over as much as possible. We, 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 we really would love to. We're going through all these different types of interior plans and it's very exciting. We have <coughs> bar mitzvahs coming up and all these different types of great occasions that we want to celebrate with the community. So, uh, yeah, uh, that is our best interest, but really would prefer to have that time here. Yeah, so, so I, I guess the one thing that I, I, I would be open to supporting as, as the discussion goes, but I wouldn't necessarily be on board with that strict drop dead deadline of five years. Because if we come back and maybe there is a review, maybe there's a midpoint review at five years, they might have said we got rid of the retail a year ago. You know, so I, I, I would not be as uh, open to the strictest five-year concept. I'm sorry, was this too Mr. Fisher, you have Yeah, this time we'll uh, <laughs> put the coin because I one of the year I appreciate that coming back to this new rendering. I think it's a big, big improvement from what we've seen last time. And I guess the question is, is that a uh, change in five years? Is that a major change in, in the consent judgment? Is that considered a major change? Is it to eliminate it? The draft presently worded would say that in five years, within five years, the retail has to go away. It can't exist longer and than I'm five. And I'm saying to you, is that a major change if that is stricken from the consent judgment? Well, it's not in the existing consent judgment. I understand. It's what we're adding right. now. Right. But Terry's mentioning a. <laughs> I think you were talking, Terry, about architectural elements. Okay, yeah, I'm for striking that portion out altogether. I, I think that it's a nice building, and it, I think it, it really addresses what I was looking for, and that is, I don't see a shopping center in the synagogue. It more or less works if it's done that way, and I'm sure this will be tied to a 
side plan, right? Yeah. So, I was shrinking that portion of myself. Yeah, um, what we're trying to do is work in compromise. <laughs> and there are some members on the council that under no circumstances do they want to have a synagogue with, with uh, retail in the same building. And now, the last time it didn't bother me, it still doesn't bother me. But, and, and I realize that in order to go to the bank, you're going to have to have a, an income stream in order to satisfy the bankers that you can get the note on a, on a monthly basis. And so I don't want to take that piece of the thing either. But by the same token, uh, because we want it to look like a, a synagogue from end to end, or retail from end to end, um, I don't want the retail there you know, five minutes after the mill is paid for. So if you know, there are some uh, religious organizations that have uh, a, a profit-making piece of their organization, while the other piece is a nonprofit, and to satisfy the wishes of this council, um, I want to I don't want to stretch it beyond the time that you can comfortably pay for the pay for the building and have the <coughs> retail move out. Um, I don't know that it's five years. I don't think ten. I I'm not a friend of ten years. In ten years, I don't think anybody sitting around this table is going to be here. And I don't want to kick the can down the road so that the next council that's sitting here in ten years has to deal with something that we couldn't deal with uh, and make a, a definitive a sundown or, or whatever a decision that the next council doesn't have to live with and, uh, or make the decision for us. So I don't know. You know, I'm not married to five years, um, but my my uh, feeling is I don't want the retail there any longer than it takes to pay for the building. And uh, that's that piece of it. The other piece of it is I think this is an absolute wonderful rendition, much better than the Koran, the one that they did <laughs> Crayola's last time. Uh, and also, you put a, a big addition of a portico was never there. That's good. I think it was there, but it was streamlined. Yeah. Pardon? It was streamlined. Oh, yeah? It had yeah. A more of a pediment. Oh, yeah? Uh, maybe the rendering was in such a way that I didn't get the depth of it. So. But uh, that really, that looks like a, a good building. Even with the retail on the end. And I'm not troubled. I'm not troubled by that. But I do want to. Um, kind of care for the wishes of part of the, the council that said they don't want retail there under any circumstances. So <coughs> I'm just trying to find a, a happy medium. I, I just wanted to point out that we did make the upgrades to the retail yeah. so it's not as tired yes. and it fits more streamlined. Right. So we're trying to balance the, some of the comments that the council yeah, has. Like I think they did a nice job. Great. I'd like to thank Seymour Mandel, Dustin A. Big big fan of ours, or we've been a big fan of his, but uh, he's done a fantastic job doing this for us. The one thing I would say is if Mr. Lance is right, you ought to be sweating bullets. Uh, when he says that they're not going to last more than two years, because I don't know how you're ever going to convince, convince the bank that, and I don't think that's going to happen. Uh, They've I been there for a long time, and I think and I think we'll be able to lock them into a, you know, to a little bit longer. You know, for five years. Um, into a five-year contract, and uh, you know, I go again. Our goal is to try to get the is to try to take over the entire building in five years. Right, right now, we have like a, a three thousand square foot type of hall that we can have, like you know, after synagogue and stuff. But um, you know, we have to grow. We expect we're going to be more than that. So you know, they could be five, they could be six, seven, eight, nine. You know, but you know, our goal is is, is, is to get this done. It's really to uh, you know, and again, this is going to be, I invite all of you to come in once this, once this project is underway and once it's, once it's going, because you're going to see, you know, what Mr. Seiler mentioned about uh, about the uh, about the neighborhood. Uh, most of those members, most of those kids, they're the ones that are waiting to come 
or which one? What, this this one is in the park. Yeah. So there's also the opportunity that residents who want to perhaps move into Southville. Yeah. Yeah. But there are no houses. Huh? What? But there are no houses. In our sub, there yeah, right. zero houses. Right. 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 The sub across is where they're starting. That's what I'm saying. They, if they could start starting to buy a population that below the ten mile, yeah. 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 I think even since it was the last time I heard of one other person that's uh, that's uh, looking to move in. So Let me put it this way: I will not be the roadblock. All right. No, I, I think I'm here. Because I su I support the the project. Yeah. 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 So I, I hear four people saying. Uh,
even though we're not going to put a restriction, are we saying though that that portion of the retail can't go further? Is 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 there a can't limitation? Be well, right. Is there a limitation on that he can't exceed 20, whatever the percentage right. is of what the current retail is? For right now, we want that in there still. Well, okay. well, well I, I I would say that right now. I mean, and, and we should we said this last time. There's there's there is two people at the end. There's two people here at the end. There is a uh, antenna right here called the uh, shirt box or something, the tie box, the shirt box. And then there is actually a retail shop here also. These, yeah, scarf, uh, scarf <coughs> uh, these two are under contract. These two are not. The, uh, these indivi this individual is paying a bit. This person is not paying. Uh, he's not paying at all. Our goal is we. Uh, so right now, this is being classified this with this. this. Right now, we're in the process of removing this person. We want to want to remove this person here so we can take over the entire market here and keep this person, this person, right. and this person. Through the that. chair, we have that calculated. Right. right. So that includes yeah. three spaces. So what's the, yeah, we put in the square footage and it's not it being okay. expanded. Okay. So what's the answer on the You want a consensus on removing the restriction? Five-year or any restriction on when this has to be paid, correct? So when that has to be out of there. Right. And the and that includes that includes not expanding the commercial. Right. Not expanding any more than what we have now. Correct. Not expanding any more, but removing the five-year restriction. Right. Okay. So we need a consensus done. Yes. Myron. In a true uh, spirit of a consensus, <laughs> it's not what I want, but I could live with it. Yeah. Yeah. Yes. Yes. Then yes. we don't have a consensus. Mm. Well, you've got five. I mean, it's not a consensus. Yeah. The consensus is when they all. Just what I said. It's not what I want. It's not what I want, but I can live with it. Thank you very much. Appreciate it. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. What's the new one? Right here. 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 I don't believe I you know. I don't you know. I don't know. I don't know. I do I I'm so am I. I'll go figure out how to watch it. Cause it, I was, it looks just like the piece we have out there, doesn't it? What? Looks like the piece we have out in the lobby. Yeah, but ours is bigger. Is that thing ours is taller? Okay. And the pedestal. Hold on a second. Yeah, just keep going. Yeah, the pedestal. The beautiful piece. When I saw that this morning, I thought. Marathon lot, uh, which is in the old park which is the south uh, east corner of Greenfield and Eleven Mile. Uh, as they were pulling in, uh, they hit a, a post which took off a valve, so it was free flowing. Uh, they've got we've got the uh, the leak stopped. We lost about three three thousand gallons of gas. Uh, we've got Oakland gas? County uh, gasoline. Ooh. It ran into the street. It ran into the street and into the sewer. So it's in the sewer heading south right now. And we've got Oakland County Drain Commission on um, scene right now. We have about seven departments on scene. It's quite an operation over there. Oakland County Incident Management Team is there. Uh, we've taken over a lot of our resources, light the whole area up, and what we have to really do now is figure out where uh, where downstream is, where it's going, and isolate. We've sh we, they've shut off any pumping stations, so we don't pump it into neighborhoods, and we uh, have to make sure we isolate any ignition sources. So that's where we're at right now. It's probably going to, we have Oakland County uh, North uh, has
hazmat team, Oakland County South hazmat team on board. We probably have about 60 or 70 personnel over there right now uh, from around the county. It's 10 mile in Greenfield. No. 11, 11, 11, 11 mile in Greenfield. It's an Oak Park uh, incident, so Oak Park Incident Command, we're just assisting them. Oh, I know, I know. Yeah, it's the, the marathon. It's a marathon station right on the corner. Uh, but I just wanted to come back and give you an update. Uh, we're trying to uh, assist them in any way we can. Are they warning? Are they warning the people about in that area? Absolutely, we've evacuated probably a half a mile uh, circle all around the area, uh, isolated the area. I heard it on the news before we came over here. Yeah. Uh, Actually, you know, we had a, we had a uh, yeah. restaurant fire on Greenfield Road uh, right at the same time this came in, so our incident uh, uh, incident commander had to shoot up uh, Greenfield uh, to go to this. Um, the, the, oh, the restaurant fire was ours. We, we kept it small. Uh, I, I don't know the name. It's two, uh, 20,905 Greenfield. I'll, I'll get the name for you. Yeah, I, I didn't go on it. It was... Uh, 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 Battalion Chief White was on it. Pardon me? It a shopping center? It's in an office building. I think it's a small restaurant on the ground floor of a nor uh, one of the no North Park Towers over there. Or not North Park Towers, but uh, Northland Towers. Oh, it's below... Um, nine mile. It's below nine the nine second building north of yeah. north yeah. 8 Mile. 9 Mile. Yeah. Well, it's, it's, a good good yeah. 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 Yeah, it's quite a distance. So that it was out, but... Uh, okay. Yeah, we always worry about any ignition source. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. What about the city of the nursing home right there? We didn't, we didn't evacuate the nursing home. Uh, we've isolated it, and we, we are monitoring the air in the nursing home constantly to make sure. Uh, I need one more. That it's, with, the, with the heat out, we can't just move people outside. I need yeah, one more. That's, that's right. So we have to, we have to kind of balance, balance, balance that against isolating them in place. Okay. Yeah, we're going down this side. Are they all the same?
list adjacent um, pawn shops and alternative financial services on the border of the property. Those are listed in pink. Um, there was a request to look into the National League of Cities Bank On program, which we did. But the main the main change um, with regard to the regulations, I, I believe there was consensus on uh, just about all the items, was um, increasing from a minimum of 1,000 foot to 1,500 feet. And I'm going to take the most extreme. Under uh, potential alternative financial services, there's 24 initial eligible properties that are reduced down to five maximum based on the B3 as a special land use consideration for AFS locations. And the pawn shops would be 18 initially eligible, reduced down to a four maximum with a 1,500 foot separation. So that, um, going to 1,500 feet reduced the potential amount of properties, but we're still at, at about four to five new ones if everything worked out perfectly. There was a request to um, prohibit neon signs, which we did add to the regulations. And since the moratorium is um, scheduled to expire on August 11th, I'll be coming back to the council on the 30th asking for maybe a 60 to 90 day extension so that we can schedule a proper public hearing based on the feedback you give us tonight. But I do want to remind the council, currently um, pawn shops and alternative financial services can go in any retail um, zone district throughout the city and there are no regulations. And what we've tried to do is require them or limit them to B3 as a special use approval. And uh, this, this process allows the Planning Commission to hold a public hearing, City Council to hold a public hearing um, before they make a recommendation. That all passes and the council approves the special use approval, it's still subject to the mayor's uh, sign off, just like a police background check and, and other, other things he would have to take into consideration. But this would definitely limit the potential, um, put a process in place, put regulations in place to protect uh, adjacent residents and, and neighbors. And um, I'd be happy to answer any questions that the council may have specifically. Now, the red that marks Southfield, <laughs> and that does not include the uh, party stores that have cash checking. That's correct. We, we yeah. talked about single single stores, um, single yeah. storefront. We were um, excluding um, supermarkets and check cashing if it's less than 10 percent of the total the total okay. space. So the red, so the red uh, designated locations. Uh, do they presently exist as cash places? As, as cash So you can almost fronts. triple that number, right? No. There are, well, four, there are, 14, there are 14 existing, and there would, could be a maximum of five additional ones if everything worked out perfectly. No, but I'm talking about the stores that have check, check cashing and... and, and uh, There'd be an addition to that. Right? Oh, if if you're saying the other services that offer it, yeah, yeah. There's, there's, there's probably uh, a lot more, but th they're an accessory use as opposed to a primary. Yeah. Use. And I think you made the initial recommendation that we would um, not include like a Myers or or a party store that had a limited amount of space dedicated to check cashing. That 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 not be the primary. That's right. Business. Right.
Under our under our proposed regulations, they wouldn't be permitted at all because it's not B3 district. But currently, they could. Okay. Remember, there's no regulation at all. If okay, today. Retail, but today. If, if we if we uh, if we adopted these regulations, yes. they would not be allowed to go in Northland Mall because Northland Mall is not zoned B3. That's a okay. Regional shopping, yeah, regional. Let commercial. me pick a, a B3 location. Well, I, I can show you. The, the only places is this one B3 right here, and there's one small piece right here, and then most of them are um, located up on Telegraph, just south of 12 Mile. Those, those, those are, are the, the only, only parcels located? that are B3 and meet the separation of 1,500 feet. Okay. So then once w then once one locates there, the the yeah, next the one the would have to be at least 1,500 feet. For the most part, yeah. they do. Yeah. The rest of the green disappears. For the most part. Yeah. yeah. But in theory, one could one could locate on the north end and be 1,500 feet away on the south. Yeah. In theory. Sure. And again, the property owner and the mix of uses would all have to dictate that being allowed. And what we believe is this meets the reasonable test if we ever get challenged in court, but it, at the same time, in all practicality, prohibits any really future growth in this area. The existing ones that um, would be labeled as existing non-conforming, and if they either cease to exist for a year period or they, they cannot allow to expand or if they were damaged through fire or wind, um, more than 50%, they wouldn't be allowed to reestablish themselves. So this really puts a cap on it, and those that do come in, it, it gives us very strong regulations if they do come in. Okay. Um, Terry, uh, thank you very much for <coughs> for this. As I recall the conversation we had uh, last month, um, we wanted, uh, you know, one concern was, well, there are people that may need these services. And by adding um, the pink uh, location to the map, um, there, there's still lots of opportunity um, uh, should someone need a check cashing um, or, or alternative financial um, services uh, provider. Um, I think what we really wanted to capture is, uh, and it was Miss Jordan who suggested the 1,500 feet, is that we, we've got a saturation. And, we, and as a community, we really don't want a lot of this type of institution. So um, I'm supportive of this. And I think you demonstrated it well um, with these visuals that, um, as I recall the con conversation, you're, you're captured what we um, are concerned. Thank you. Again, it's not not our purpose to promote any additional ones. That right. But if they do come in, we would have some reasonable regulations so that we're minimizing any negative impact. Right. And that being said, I have read a number of white papers on the need. I think up to a quarter of Americans use are either underbanked or underserved or not don't have banking for, for various reasons. So there is a need, but I, I, I think we fulfilled our need by our existing facility. And, and you know, I would, I would add, um, uh, I, I shop a lot at Foodland on 8 Miles, if it's in the neighborhood. Um, and they do quite a business there with money orders, and check cash. Um, so, yeah, you know, uh, so not only do you have all of the dots on the map, but then you, you don't have all of the other places, and there are plenty, right, uh, where you can get money orders or, or whatever. Right. The, um, the big difference is they don't gouge. Yeah. In many cases, they have a very reasonable rate to cash your check as opposed to a percentage of the total. Uh, at Foodland, they have a window that is, that that's just about all they do is do money orders and uh, check cash.
check. Um, you, you know, the right. age is disabled, so on and so forth. So um, when when Social Security goes to that, um, that's the law way you No, it said next year. They can't toss you to do that. <laughs> is, is, is the council comfortable that um, we'll request the moratorium for like 60 days that we can schedule a public hearing in the next 60 days? Yeah. Are you comfortable with that? Sure. Secondly, 
we need to look at working with the legal department, look at our ordinances to make sure that we're consistent with the new state act. But if a currently approved cell tower, which has already gone through the process, and there's a co-location, previously we would do an administrative review on that. But now it says that if it meets these four requirements, then there's no administrative review, and basically the building department has to issue a permit. And the four items are wireless communication equipment will be co-located on an existing wireless communication support structure or in an existing equipment compound. The existing wireless communication support structure or existing equipment compound is in compliance with local unit of government zoning ordinance or was approved by the appropriate zoning body of an official of the local government. Three, the proposed co-location will not do any of the following. Increase the overall height of the communication structure by more than 20 feet or 10% of its original height, whichever is greater. Increase the width of the wireless communication support structure by more than the minimum necessary to, mit to permit co-location. And increase the area of existing equipment compound to greater than 2,500 square feet. The proposed, and finally, the proposed co-location complies with the terms and conditions of any previous final approval of the wireless communication support structure. So if it meets those four items, um, we get no review and it goes directly for building permit. That goes to the building authority. Building, building department. department, right. And we already, since this was passed, we've already had three applicants come to the counter in the last couple days and say, give us a, uh, your permit, you're not entitled to any review. So they make the decision now. Now, if, if any of those um, conditions where it increases more than 20 feet or more than 10 percent or more than 2,500 square feet, then the, the community is allowed a special land use approval, but then there's a strict requirement of 14 business days to review the application and then 60 days to process the application. Now we're not talking about new cell towers, but we're talking about co-location. So in the past, we've been able to collect a fee of $750, vet it through many departments and make some recommendations. Now, um, if it's not in the administrative approval based on the terms, no fees are collected. We still have to review it to make sure it's compliance. And it's almost, an, uh, they're looking for an automatic approval for the building department. The terms and definitions are slightly different than our, our ordinance. So we're going to have to update that. We're going to have to update the ordinance to be consistent with this law. But more importantly, we have to update the way we do business because we're just not geared up. All the departments aren't geared up to move this quickly. And so I'm, I'm, I'm sure we're going to have some initial challenges with the people that are coming to the counter on their timeliness and our ability to fairly review it to say, yes, you meet these requirements or you don't. And again, this, this thing got rushed, rushed through. We're just all the municipalities are now starting to talk to each other and we're starting to deal with it. And like I said, within the last week, we've had three representatives of communication facilities come, come to the building department asking for a permit. We've been told by our lobbyists there was zero votes against this. It passed unanimously. Both houses. Because we're not going to have the There are other things that we're trying to solve. I don't know if they intended it put this kind of a burden on but that's, that's what happens. Well, this was one of those things, if you read, it's interesting how uh, at Congress level, when they tack things on, this is somehow part of the Middle Class Tax Relief and Job Creation Act of 2012. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. But we don't, we don't can't even collect money for the work we do. Right. That's the stuff we have. One of them. We do it for free. So uh, Mr. Uh, Terry, this came from Congress? Yeah. Originally came from Congress, and then it, um, the state had to adopt an emergency amendment based on what Congress said, and this is coming down from Lansing. And this was, again, adopted May 24th, and we were told it didn't even spend a week in, in either the House or the Senate before it was approved. And we can't, we can't uh, object to it. We can't say it's constitutional or unconstitutional with the mandate. Well, I'm going to defer to our legal department. So, if that's a mandate, do we have to accept it? Yeah, I mean, it's, it's now part of your 
zoning authority. Now it's the zoning authority. Little by little. Mm -hmm. Little by little. Mm -hmm. But what I'm saying is, either the state voted it down? Well, I think it... Or uh, is it mandated by the federal I government? don't know how much of this was mandated under the federal law. I don't know, but yeah. there is reference to yeah, the federal law. Yeah, maybe at least a part of this yeah. it was. I don't know if the whole thing was. Maybe why the vote was the way it was. It may have been instructed. There's nothing you could do. Mm -hmm. It might have, again, might have been tied on to federal aid. Mm -hmm. We're not sure. It's an unfunded <laughs> mandate is what it is. It really is. And the, and the problem is, um, just between the time we were aware of it and we tried to sit down on it, we already got people knocking at the door saying, give us a permit. Yeah. So and, I, and again, I didn't want the yeah. council to who I inspects. Well, the department. building department would spec for structural, but typically, if someone comes in for a building permit, they check planning and see if there's appropriate zoning. And then we say, no, we haven't received an application. We have to go through administrative approval or site plan approval or council approval. And then we would list that when it got approved, then the building department then could proceed with their building permit. But they're trying to circumvent that process right now. They have circumvented. Well, they have, but we haven't issued any permits yet. <laughs> That's the thing of it is, we're, we have that two to 14 days. It's only if they don't meet one of the four tests. Right. And in ma many cases, they can meet that test, okay. those four tests. And how long does it take to get to assess whether they meet those four tests? There's no time requirement on that. Until the election. If we're really busy and then we've got a flood of these things, we're not going to take over. Obviously. I mean, again, it's going to come down to if they don't feel we're moving fast enough, mm -hmm. they can always. Um, take legal action mm -hmm. against the city, I suppose. Okay. Um, you we have no, no, <coughs> that? Is legal action? Well, again, we're trying to figure out a strategy that we, we can be fair and reasonable and meet the requirements of the law. It's just so new. We just met on it last week. But why don't we see if we can fight? Well, our, you know, that's maybe where the lobbyists and, and some others need to take action. But we can't ignore this, and we have to put some um, procedures in place so that we're at least com consistent with the law. Okay. Well, we just have to get a hold of Chief Justice Roberts and uh, fight for him. Are you finished? 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 And that is uh, under uh, CI, that is increase the overall height of the wireless communication support structure by more than 20 feet, or 10% of its original height, whichever is greater. Uh, theoretically, one company can come out and add uh, 20 feet to the top of a structure, which is not the intended size of the structure. And then a week later, another company can come out and add another 20 feet to the, to the structure and put their antenna on it. So, uh, you know, I suppose they could build the Tower blocks. of Babel. Build blocks. Yeah, they, yeah, they could build the Tower of Babel. Is there a law on height? Pardon? Is there a law against certain heights? Well, they have to get up high enough, you have to put a red light on it so a plane doesn't run into it. <laughs> but uh, I don't know that there's any, any uh, limit on we well, don't have any other than right, if it's under like the FAA or yeah. something in terms of the height and plane, right? Yeah, right. Yeah, right. Yeah. 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 yeah, put 20 foot of the structure though, then 20 foot on top of that structure. Yeah. So you yeah, have three yeah, hundred feet. feet. So you have three different uh, individuals. Uh, now, the, the only thing that's uh, some some uh, cause of comfort uh, is many of these cell towers are on city-owned property, and we have ground leases. The other thing that Mr. Frazier and I spoke of, the primary tenant of the tower is unlikely to allow someone to get a primary position above theirs. Yes. So the primary tenant has the top position. And then I, 
we're doing enough of these, there, used to, there has to be about a 10 foot separation. So then the next one is usually 10 feet lower, and then the third one's about 10 feet lower. Once you start going, now you've got 30 feet below the top, you start losing its effectiveness because of trees and topography and buildings. But the fact is, if someone wanted to extend this 19 feet, which is less than the 20, mm -hmm. and it's less than the 10% rule, then in theory they could. Now, we also have a number of these on top of our tall buildings. And for most, most purposes, we would, you would not even notice that they're up there because you can't see them from ground level. And they're constantly swapping new technology. Um, we have um, circumstances where we have the ground-mounted equipment in our fire stations and our parks. And in the past, we've been successful in them upgrading fencing and landscaping around there. It's not, it doesn't, it's not muted. It's kind of mute to that. We can still try to require that, but basically if they're within these parameters, we, we don't have any review at all. And that's what we've lost that ability to do the administrative review on those cases. Yeah. I just uh, noticed, it escaped me a, with the confusion of trying to figure this out. Um, it can only go up 10 feet on a 100 foot tower. On a 100 foot, yeah. yeah. It has to be a 200 foot tower in order to take up 20 feet. That's all we have. Just um, we will be coming back in a future study session to discuss this at length. Put a bigger tower there. That being an outstanding example of confusing legislation, we, on the other hand, have proposed justification of uh, the programs that we have. Uh, Council's aware. Uh, each year is part of the budget review. We look at uh, water rates. We did get up in the control uh, below uh, the 5% level. Uh, but we also are looking at programs uh, that we have outstanding for uh, water and sewer hookups having to do basically with daily septics. Uh, because the septic that are out there, and there are many of them, uh, uh, are getting, you know, uh, obviously uh, each year, one year um, uh, older in their functionality. Uh, and we're also looking at uh, the hookups to the system and how we can motivate folks uh, to hook up. Um, so in, that, in conjunction with that, we've looked at all the different programs that we have. We have four programs. Um, we have a, a PowerPoint presentation that uh, we believe we've cond condensed this, and we have a streamlined uh, approach to making this easier to motivate people, uh, hopefully to, to look up, assist people, and take into account the economic climate that we're, that, uh, that we're in. Yeah. And with that, uh, Fred will uh, run us through uh, the PowerPoint uh, presentation. As uh, Mr. Shred has indicated, we currently have four separate programs offered by the city to assist our property owners with failing septic uh, systems and or failing uh, drinking water wells. Um, much of this, uh, these activities have been undertaken to lessen the environmental impact of both the uh, failed drinking waters and the septic uh, systems. The uh, existing programs are what uh, staff refers to as a direct uh, benefit charge program, uh, a septic to sewer uh, contractor a loan program, a water service loan program, and a water main frontage uh, charge program. For administrative purposes, uh, customer convenience and greater participation by our property, on property owners, we're proposing <coughs> a streamline and unify all four programs. We currently operate all four programs independently. And I want to walk you through each of the four programs. They have different interest rates, different amortizations, and we're proposing to get them all in line. The first is the direct uh, benefit charge. And then uh, <coughs> that was on July 27, 1998. The city adopted Ordinance 1443 as part of the financial plan for the uh, West Side Sewer Project. Uh, this, uh, the direct benefit charge program, for, uh, permits the city to loan funds for the purpose of, uh, of assisting a homeowner or property owner tap into the city sewer system 
It established, it, when the ordinance was adopted in 1998, it established, I should put slides, I apologize. Uh, it established a base rate of $6,900. That uh, tap rate goes up every year by $100. And the way the ordinance was written upon completion of the system, that $100 increase started to go up. So uh, in about 2002, the system must have finished. We started with a base of $6,900. The TAP fee today is $7,900. We currently make funds available at 6% amortized uh, up to uh, 20%. All of this program has been codified. 20 years. Pardon? 20 years. 20 years. Did I say 20? 20, 20, 20. I meant 20 years, clearly. So it's 6% <laughs> at 20 years, and this program has been codified in this ordinance 1443 adopted in 1998. The next uh, component actually came about in September of 2010, and this is the uh, septic to sewer contractor loan program. So the first piece dealt with just tapping. Prior to this program in 2010, we did not have a vehicle to help uh, our, our property owners. So September 2010, council establishes a revolving loan program. The initial capital amount of that loan program was 750,000, and that was within the 2010-11 uh, water sewer budget. And the purpose of that was to assist property owners who are currently serviced by uh, private uh, sewage disposal systems, septic systems, for the purpose of connecting to the city's sanitary sewer system. The present contract alone permits the property owner to develop the, the ability to borrow funds necessary to construct the sewer line connection. These funds are available at 3% and amortized over 15 years. So we had two components, one to tap at 6%, 20-year amortization, and a second one to build your sewer line, 3%, 15-year amortization. Then in October, 20, uh, October 24, 2011, City Council, by resolution, created um, the Water Service Loan Program. This uh, program uh, assists our homeowners uh, with connecting to water service. And, and that includes, it's a broader definition, that includes the tap to the water main, the construction of the water service line and those uh, permits. Like the uh, sewer to sewer to the septic to sewer contractor loan program, that program has a 3% interest rate, 15 year amortization. So the water service loan program is designed to help people who are on wells connect to the city's water system. That program was established in October 24, uh, October 24, 2011. Then we have uh, something that was kind of odd, and, uh, but it, this is how we've actually been administering it. When you connect to the city's water service, we were charging you a water main frontage uh, component. So the, the next slide is a water main frontage <coughs> charge program. And there we were charging you, the uh, property owner who was looking to tap to the city's water system, $14.50 per linear, uh, linear foot charge. Uh, so if your lot was 100 feet, we were charging 100 feet times 1450, 14.50. And then we were taking that amount, you had the option to pay it up all at one time, or saying, will charge you no interest over the next 60 bills, or six bills a year, a 10-year billing period. Or if you had a 100-foot front, 100 frontage at 1450, you'd be paying $145 a year for the next 10 years added on to your water bill. We took a look at all, all of these programs and the recommendation of the administration that we streamlined the programs and that all four get uh, streamlined, and what we're proposing is that we create an interest-only payment of 3% for the first three years, with the remaining balance to be financed at 3% over 15 years for a total
total period of 18 years, kind of a compromise between that 15-year period for the water uh, main connect, the sewer construction, that 15-year versus the 20-year period. Um, that would also include the water main frontage charge would also be rolled into that finance option. We're also further recommending that as part of the city's annual budgeting process uh, that we review the capital needs of the loan program and review the terms, the interest rate, amortization schedule, and uh, schedule of the program, taking into consideration the general economy, market interest rates, and regulatory conditions. The uh, benefits uh, of this uh, program, we, you know, we continue to demonstrate our environmental sensitivity, our customer sensitivity. We encourage investment in properties within the community. More ho hookups to the city's water system and uh, sewer system will mean incre increased revenues to those systems and reduces the administrative burden. Because right now, we're administering four different programs throughout different parts of the city. And this will put them all in one group. The water department won't be doing a water frontage charge. The uh, treasurer's office and the building department in a streamlined fashion would be administering all four programs, same rules. What we'd like to do, Craig and Spark, we're just looking for discussion suggestions and if there's a comfort level The, the action, there's a tweak to the ordinance that needs to be made, so there will be a proposed <laughs> ordinance amendment as well as a resolution uh, to establish the program and set the rate. Um, you know, 18 years is a long time, uh, and people change, you know, they move. So, how does this, uh, if, I, if someone gets in on this program and then they sell their house, they're expected to pay the whole thing off as part of the sale of the house, correct? It's mm -hmm. correct. It goes with the, the house. Oh. So, so the the typically, the, 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 the new mortgage company coming in would require this to be paid off at time of sale. We oh. wouldn't necessarily. It could be the new owner could, because we would just be billing it yeah. every year. But normally, the new mortgage company won't. We'll not go ahead and put a, you know, go ahead and yeah. make the loan uh, on, on the property. And by the same token, uh, someone could um, pay this off for you. Absolutely. In fact, we've had some paid off. Looks like no, no penalties, obviously. That, that's right. correct. Right. Looks like we've done about 168 of these loans since the program inception, and a number of them have been paid off. Yeah. Quite a few, actually. But unfortunately. Where if you take the total uh, possible pro uh, properties that are in this situation, uh, we're only at about the 10% level now. Mm -hmm. they keep in mind that if, if they accept it, oh well, it's not for us. Okay, we do not force that. But we're saying for the total population, potential it is about 2,000 for about 10%. The way the current ordinance is written, every three years they put a, a homeowner that or property owner that is on a septic system is to certify that their system is working, yeah. and that is done through a private inspection process. Another another reason we, what we are suggesting is there's, there are people that may not have to convert, okay, by, by force of necessity, but may want to, and you know, three years takes into account the economic conditions. And really, kind of gives it a motivation factor uh, to to invest in the property. And, uh, you know, so we're hoping to improve both uh, residential and commercial. Council may recall that you uh, had set aside a block about eighty thousand in community development block grant funds. Mm -hmm. We had some families that in, that were income eligible, and there are still pro there are still funds within the ship that if you're income eligible, we can assist those families with funding from the SHIP program, but those funds too need to be paid back upon sale of the property. Um, they currently have no interest charge. That may be something that gets re reviewed in the, in the future. And 
but the typical cost of a septic system hooked up was about $13,800. I looked at the PowerPoint we presented to Council. Uh, I think that was in August of 2010, and that was our average cost. And we did uh, seven different projects. We had one that went over $20,000. Uh, but the average was that 13,800. That's just for the septic to sewer. The water line numbers can be similar numbers as well. Primarily the west side, but we still have a number of folks in the south part of the city, in the central part, still on wells and septic. And there, that's an area where we have a lot of failing systems. I mean, the mapping on the community. Okay, we know all that. Okay. But when the new people come in and want to purchase a house in that area, and when they find out that another bill will be paid, plus besides the mortgage and everything else, I believe they're not going to buy in that section. That area. That's one reason we have a loan program. Mm -hmm. I mean, it's interest. It, that's I mean, not at least for three, three years. years. Yeah. That's not going to uh, the house. You can't sell a house with a failing septic. Right. Well, we know that. So I'm that's not, the I'm situation. Not that's All I'm questioning mm. is the 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 process of people buying a house at that time. Even even if the system, somebody's on a well and assessment, that's a negative for a sale you know, situation because of potential. Um, that's just a fact. But if it's failing, uh, they won't pass inspection. They, 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 they won't. We know that. But will it, will it be two other people combined in that section once they find out? I think so. Well, unless you require the seller to pay it off at closing. They'll, want, they'll have to pay it they'll off. They'll have to pay it off. Mm -hmm. And that's how a lot of them were paid off before. Right. Mm -hmm. Kind of like having a second mortgage. That's right. Lean on the house. And in the economy when our homes aren't worth what they were. Right. Good. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, um, Couple things. One is we don't do inspections and septic inspections. Doesn't Oakland County suppose aren't? Oakland County was doing the inspections. We've now re restructured to it where those insp inspections are done by the private sector. There's a list of companies that can do the inspection on your behalf. Oakland County was was not even when we looked when we analyzed the numbers we were getting less than 100 a year, and we know that we should be doing about six. 100, 650 a year. So the ordinance was rewritten that every three years, you the homeowner has to recertify. Okay. Mm -hmm. uh, the other piece is on the direct benefit charge program. If I recall correctly, uh, we put the uh, teaser in there that uh, to encourage people to to connect right away. So it was sixty nine hundred dollars, and we'll go up a hundred dollars every year and, until they connected. Which you know, you would say the thought was that most people would say, "I want to do it now rather than wait later." Well, since there's no ceiling on this, at some point in time, it's going to be twenty thousand dollars to connect if the people keep we're selling them. That's a good point. We're going to analyze that. Yeah, there, there should be a. We can. We can. I know what we're trying to do here. Yes, we we're trying to pay these bonds off. Right. Well, <coughs> so. <coughs> Seems like there is some where the best is. Yeah, it's going it's yeah. to be prohibitive. <coughs> I'd like to do this, but I can't afford the you know the fifteen thousand dollars. Yeah, I think it's uh, we kind of looked at what an average uh, what it costs to do. It's, it's, uh, you know, it's at least more than half of that just to just to do it. Right. Yeah. To, to so we'll, we'll we'll take a look at that that piece. Upstairs, read it does it does raise a lot of questions. In the housing office, there's a one-page Kipling Miller document that hangs on the wall that every homeowner should see. It has the value of replacing your hot water tank, your furnace, your roof.
they, they, it claims, and this is from the 70s, that the average life expectancy of a septic field is 30 to 40 years old. And at a certain point, we have a housing stock in part where the homes are clearly hitting that 40-year point, 30, 40, where the life expectancy is going to start to, w to wear, and as Councilman Zyra said, 98, 14 years, um, more more systems maybe should have failed, but folks, it means folks have been doing some good things, maintaining them and sure. working tough, and you can't blame them for having a 13, 14, $15,000 expense. A few dollars a month for good treatment can save yeah. a lot of money. The, the other question, and yeah, this is the same, the drug benefit charge, um, if the house is sold, does the meter start over, or does it continue to? What meter? The, the, the $6,900 meter. No, it doesn't start over. So it goes with the, it goes with the property? It would just say that it goes on an annual basis. So right, if the house sold and it's been 10 years, you'd still be at the 7900 It wouldn't go back to the 69 because there's a new owner. No, I say, I yeah, that's she right. Didn't. She's got what I'm saying. Yeah. Um, but then the, the new owner says, well, wait a minute, I just got, got here. In, but the thing is, though, that we, what we were, I, I remember go, going back at when we went in, and, and we obtained the bonds, we also had built into the payment schedule on those bonds a certain percent every year of people collect, uh, of connecting. Yeah. So every year that someone doesn't connect, the city is having to offset those bonds, mm -hmm. or the water fund is offsetting those bonds because people haven't connected. So there wasn't just... Like, we'll give you a bonus if you connect early. It really was to say that there's going to be a deficit every year in the ability of the city to pay these bonds back. So, yes, you might be paying 7900 now, but it's to try to recoup what we've been offsetting with that deficit for the first 10 years. Yeah, but it's clearly not working. I, uh, I, agree, with I agree with you. We are, people are not connecting yeah. un with the schedule that we assumed and that the actuaries assumed right. would be connected. That's well, not happening. And at one point I argued maybe perhaps we should waive that, but legals pointed out to me that that was in an essence a state mandate, a buy-in for those people right. to pay into the existing yeah. system. Right. They wanted to know how we were going to finance these bonds, and we said this is how we're going to finance them. So Have these bonds been refinanced? No, no, I think no. that they are. Oh, no, those are the other ones. These, these came from the state. Yeah, yeah these are the low interest. I think it was 3% yeah. of the time, yes, which right. is great. That's right, a different uh, yes. Yes. Uh, offering. Yeah. Yeah. I know Irv, is, he it's mentioned the other day that if this is one he watches. Well, it's maybe. Really you know, at some point, it, it may be less. It's a possible look at all every yeah. debt we have. It was and a great interest rate at the time. Yeah, yeah. yeah. which, by the way, yeah. one time quickly because we're going to do some more detailed homework on the bond issue that we just read. Uh, refunded. Uh, we were hoping for 250. We're gonna do a lot better than 50 savings. Oh, okay. And we're, we're working mm -hmm. through the detail now, but the market was very receptive. Mm -hmm. Put a giant mm -hmm. uh, gave us a giant sale of approval. Mm -hmm. our, how we're how we're doing business. Hi. That's it for me. Mm -hmm. But. Uh, can't be the problem with this is you have to it's a balancing act. It is. You can't be too generous because you can't take and have the whole system burdened with only a few. Mm -hmm. But on the other hand, in this economy, you know, if you can help people, you know, at least for a short period of time, uh, to encourage them to, to look up, you know, you should do it. So. Where I don't know what the payback period is, but for a first name, the next to the water and so are actually, we're now getting revenue that we never got before. Exactly. So I don't know what the payback period is going to be right. on that. Right. Uh, well, that's another facet yeah. of sure. it, is that now the monthly revenue to the water department. Sure. Mm -hmm. A piece of that revenue goes for capital mm -hmm. projects. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So we'll bring this item back on the 30th as a uh, general council item, and uh, there will be an ordinance amendment as well. And, and we'll look at this, see if it has to go in perpetuity.
Pamela Gerald, I am still an independent voice for Southfield. To you, the voters that are listening to my voice via YouTube or audio reproduction, I can be reached at P.O. Box 155, Southfield, Michigan, 40037-0155, or by telephone at 248-352-9188. When you hear a siren, someone in public safety is risking their lives for you, one of your neighbors, someone you know, or someone else in the city. How are we as a city treating our police officers and firefighters? Are we serious about public safety in Southfield? Clint Eastwood says, go ahead, make my day. You made my day tonight by accepting the SAFER grant that was approved by FEMA. That was the right thing to do. This grant required no matching funds from the city. Now, Council, we are getting more serious about public safety, but we still need to hire the seven desperately needed firefighters to continue our fast response time. The public safety millage that was approved by the voters in May of last year should afford the city the opportunity to do just that. Tell me and the voters that you, Council, will select a permanent fire chief, preferably one that's in-house, that knows our city and the residents. To do this immediately again will make my day. It's time for a change. How come this council has such a slow response time when it comes to selecting a permanent police chief, one who is educated, qualified, can improve morale, and that's respected by his peers? How come this council has such a slow response time when it comes to hiring the desperately needed 30 police officers, including the cadets that are already trained. How long should our cadets be police and waiting when we need more police officers on the streets to secure our borders? Has the police department benefited from the millage money? And can the millage money be used to hire more officers? How come this council has such a slow response time when it comes to giving our police officers the contract that they have not had since 2008, the contract that they deserve. Remember, people, every time you hear the sirens, our police officers are putting their lives on the line for you and someone you love. Our police officers are not asking for a raise. They just want things to stay the same. To stay the same. What happened to fair contract talks? Council, it's time for a change. The most important issue right now in Southfield is public safety. Council, you said that you appreciate the officers and you even compliment them on TV when it's convenient, yet you have not done the right thing. Go ahead, make my day, and give our police officers a contract now. Settle the arbitration now. Council, if you continue at this rate, you are jeopardizing the people's public safety. Council, tell me and the voters what's more important. Is it fracking resolutions, free cars, free gas, free trips, free food, or public safety. It's time for a change, Council. It's public safety time. And I ask Popeyes, which is a business that I support, to uh, be gracious enough to donate on my asking food for Council. I know you guys like to have lunch before the meeting, and I thought that I would do that. I knew that you were accepting the SAFER grant, so it was a celebration for me and from me to you. Thank you. Um,
As you may recall, at the COW meeting on May the 7th of this year, I talked about my pilgrimage to Mecca via Sidewalk Hill, looking for broken water mains along the way. As I approached the gates of Mecca, I noticed in the heavenly skies a pagan sign placed there by Shell Oil, those fracking Dutch devils. The next morning after my presentation, Mr. Charette informed me that this city, my city, this all-American city, would be performing an exorcism upon this evil European sign. This past Memorial Day, I took my traditional Memorial Day bike ride to Mecca <coughs> via Sidewalk Hill, looking for broken water mains along the way. As I approached the gates of Mecca, I noticed in the heavenly skies that a miracle had occurred. The blasphemous sign was cleansed from the heavens to the relief of all true believers. Now, I know that Mr. Charette is a financial genius, but what I didn't know is that Mr. Charette is the Wizard of Oz. This is why I live in Southfield, the great city of Southfield, a.k.a. Emerald City, and not in Mecca. Although I've heard that Mecca has a hell of a good fire department that provides terrific EMS service. Thank you, Madam President. Thank you.
out on the table in an Act 312 arbitration. We brought 150 exhibits or more. We showed everything about our appeal system. We had our outside uh, attorney uh, uh, swear under oath to the numbers and show how these numbers are obtained and why these, we have the reserves that we have to handle these appeals. Uh, we are in the process and we will come through this financial struggle that we're in. And when we come out the other side of it, we will be an independent, strong, and viable city with a strong structure, an excellent fire department, an excellent police department, and we will live within our means and will not be a ward of the state of Michigan in any way, form, or fashion. That is our goal. That's what people are working. We are unified. When we presented the budget, we talked about principle-centered government, and we talked about unity of purpose. We have We've been at this since 2004, when uh, council persons at that time had the foresight to see that we were, were that tough times were ahead, obviously, as a presenter in the uh, Bassett uh, Building Company, the, the synagogue pointed out no one could predict exactly what has happened worldwide in the, in the economy. But I'll tell you this, we at least put ourselves on a diet. We've been on it since 2004. We'll stay on it as long as we have to, and everybody plays here. Okay? Everybody plays. Top to bottom, everybody has to play, and it is painful. And I will totally, I totally understand, and uh, I, I, I wish the economic conditions weren't as, as they are, but it's, when, you, when you take a cumulative effect that if we have an 8.5% drop, as we are looking at right now in 2013-14, the 50.02% of our revenues, have, we have had a decline of 50.02%. So if we had a dollar to spend five years ago, now we have 50 cents. And I think when you take a look at what job, what kind of performance we're getting out there, how this community looks, how good our police department responds, fire department and, and all the other support units here in this city. And, and I might add, okay, it's very unfair to be, to be negative with regard to how long this and that takes, okay, and, and, and stating that council and, and all of that, because things take as long as they take to do them right. Okay, and that's what that's how long we're going to take to do things. We're going to do them in an organized manner, we're going to do them in a fair manner, and we're going to do them in, in, the, in a sequence that makes sense. That's what we've done, that's what we're going to do, and um, I, I just say that uh, uh, I've said this, I said this at the budget presentation, I, I am astounded by the performance of our employees here. It's tremendous. I'm grateful for uh, the perseverance that uh, Council has shown uh, all the way since the beginning of this. And uh, I think that if we keep pulling together, well, I just I feel like we're going to pull out and pull through this and be very in a very strong posture. And we're going to treat our employees as fairly as possible. Continue to do that. There, there are steps that have been taken in other cities that are very insensitive. Okay, involve wholesale layoffs. Uh, you know, some of the more ridiculous ones in Scranton, Pennsylvania, the latest. You know, where all the all the employees are reduced to some to minimum wage. Uh, even if that's a gimmick, it's not much of an approach. Uh, so I'll leave it at that. Um, but uh, we are sincerely doing the best we can meet all of the requirements of surviving this, this economic structure and treating our employees as, as best we can in the process. That concludes my comments. Yeah, um, thank you, uh, Mr. Schrapp, for those comments. I'd like to add one thing. Uh, Mr. Gerald gets up at the microphone and, and says, we passed the millage, why don't we hire more more police and fire. It was very clear in the millage
statements, every report we printed it. The reason that we went up for the millage is to keep from laying off police and fire, not to hire more. So the millage is doing exactly what it's supposed to do, except for the fact that the rates keep going down, so we can't do as much as we intended. So uh, it's a, a, a misnomer, and it's uh, sending the wrong message, an incorrect message, to the people that watch this when uh, the statement is, why don't we hire more with the millage because it's the millage passed. That was never the intention of the millage. Thank you. Thank you. Anything else, Council? Seeing none, I defer this meeting to